Hello everyone, this is Mirzai from Cal Poly Pomona and in this lesson we are going to look into cutting plane method which is a solution method of integer linear programming problems. To discuss the cutting plane method, we're going to go over example 10.4 of your textbook, Introduction to Linear Programming Problem. An integer programming problem looks very similar to a linear programming problem with the assumption that all your x variables are also integer. To solve this problem using uh, the cutting plane method, we have to first relax the assumption of integer decision variables and solve the problem as a simple linear programming problem. After that, we introduce new constraints that are called cutting constraints to cut the feasible region and find the best integer solution. We did something similar to that in the branch and bound method. However, the difference between branch and bound method and cutting plane is in the way that the cutting constraints are generated. So to get started, let's take a look at example 10.4. As I mentioned earlier, we first relax the assumption of integer variables and solve this problem using the regular simplex method. If we solve this problem using the simplex method, this is the optimal table that we reach. If you are not familiar with the simplex method, please go back and watch the video how to solve a linear programming problem using the simplex method before we move on further into this example. To solve this problem using the cutting plane method, first we have to find variables that are not integer in the right hand side of the problem. And then we pick one of the basic variables with fractional values and write the equation from the optimal table. In this case, if you look at the optimal table, you have two variables that have fractional values both x1 and x2 in this case have fractional values. Let's choose one of them arbitrarily. So in this case, doesn't matter which one you choose, but the number of iterations to get to the final integer problem might vary depending on what variable you choose to proceed. So let's go ahead and choose the first variable and write the equation for that row. So if I look at the row of x1, the equation related to the first row of optimal table will be the x1 plus 7 third s1 plus negative 1 third s2 equal to 7 third. So that equation is shown on the screen. The next step for us is to rewrite the equation so that the fractional values are written as a summation of an integer value and a decimal portion. So for example, 7 third here is a decimal values we divide it in two parts, the integer parts and the fractional parts. So in this case, it's going to be 2 plus 1 third. So let's go ahead and write this equation in a way that integer and decimal portions are separated. So instead of 7 third, we write 2 plus 1 third. And instead of negative 1 third, we write negative 1 plus 2 third. Now note that if this one was positive 1 third, uh, you didn't need to write it as a summation of two parts. Now that I have created this new equation, I need to keep integer values and variables with integer coefficient in the left hand side and move any fraction and variables with fractional coefficient to the right hand side of the problem. So let's go ahead and do that. So in this case, if you look at this equation, x1 plus 2s1 plus negative 1s2 and 2 are are things that I have to keep on the left hand side of my equation. At the other hand, 1 third s1, 2 third s2, and 1 third are things that I have to keep on the right hand side of my equation. So this equation here is just exactly the same as this equation. However, what we did, we just put anything that is integer to the left hand side. So any variable with integer coefficient and any integer value to the left hand side any fractional values and any variable with the fractional values on the right hand side. Now, if I look at this part of this equation, you see that both S1 and S2 have negative coefficients. And we know that S1 and S2 both are positive values according to the assumption of linear programming problem. So with that being said, this value cumulatively is always going to be a negative value, which is going to be deducted from one third. So we can say this value is always less than or equal to one third. Now, because for creating the cut equations, we always assume that all the variables are integer, including the slack and excess variable. Therefore, the highest integer closest to one third 
is zero. So we can write this equation as negative one third S1 minus two third S2 plus one third is less than or equal to zero. So now this equation is your cutting equation that needs to be added to the optimal table that you have up there here and find a new optimal solution. So I'm gonna take this new cut equation that we have and the optimal table to the next slide and we see how we can add it and solve the problem to find a new solution. So here is my optimal table and here is the cutting equation that I have created. To add this constraint to the table, first I have to standardize it by adding a slack variable. Before we do that, we put one third, which is a constant value to the left-hand side of the equation and add this slack variable to it to make it an equation as opposed to an inequality. Now I have to add this equation to my optimal table and solve the problem. So we discuss how to add a new constraint to the optimal table of a linear programming problem in sensitivity analysis. To do that, I have to add a new row and column for this new basic variable S3 and start adding that constraint to the problem. So I put S3 and S3 for new row and column and then write the coefficient of the equation in there. And for S3, because it doesn't appear in other constraints of the problem, this coefficient is going to be zero. Now, before we proceed, we want to make sure that all of our basic variables are in the echelon form. And we can confirm that here. Now we have the optimal condition because everything is in a positive form for maximization. And also we have a negative in the right hand side, which is the requirement to proceed a table with dual simplex. So therefore I can continue this table to find a new solution by using a dual simplex method. If you remember for dual simplex method, we look for the most negative value in the right hand side. And then we implement the minimum test on the negative value of the pivot row. So in this case, negative one third and negative two third are the negative values here. So we divide one third by two third and 11 third by one third, and we find a minimum value. When you do the min test, you look at the absolute values all the time. If you have forgotten the dual simplex method and you need a refresher, please go back to my video on how to solve a linear programming problem using the dual simplex method. So in this case, if I implement my min test, S2 becomes the winning column. So that becomes my pivot column. Now I have to iterate this table and take it to the next table by making sure that my pivot value, which is negative two thirds is equal to one and all the other elements in the pivot column are equal to zero. So if I do this iteration, this is the new table that I get. Nothing in the right hand side turned into an integer value that means I have to continue to add cutting constraints until I make sure that all the right-hand side values are integer. So to do that, this time I choose the second constraint here to generate my cutting constraint. So let's go ahead and generate a cutting constraint for your second equation. So I'm going to write it down here, negative 3 half S1 plus one half S3 is equal to five half. Now that I have written the equation related to the second constraint of the problem, I can go ahead and generate my cut equation. Remember to do that, we have to write the fractional values as the summation of an integer and decimal value. For example, negative um, three half, I can write it as negative two plus one half. However, for positive one half S3, you don't really need to write any equation you can leave it as that and for the right hand side you write it two plus one half so remember that if you have a positive coefficient for your variables in the left hand side which is less than one so something between zero and one you don't really need to write it as a summation so you can leave it just like that now to write the cutting uh, equation i have to bring all the integer values uh, in addition with variables with integer coefficient to the left hand side and all the fractional values and variables with the fractional values to the right hand side. Let's go ahead and do that. If I do that, this is the new equation I get. Now, if you look at the right hand side of this equation, because S1 and S3 are always greater than or equal to zero, this term is always going to be less than one half because we're always deducting something from one half. And then we can write this as less than or equal to one half. 
the highest integer um, less than one half is zero, so we can replace that one half by zero because according to the assumption, the cutting constraints always generate integer values. Now let's go ahead and put that one half to the left hand side and standardize this constraint by adding a select variable. Now I have generated a new constraint that needs to be added to my optimal table. So this time we are adding this constraint to this optimal table and try to find a new solution. So this is my final optimal table up to the previous stage, and this is my cutting constraint. I'm gonna go ahead and add that into my optimal table. So obviously I have to add a new variable here. That's a new select variable for this new constraint. And then I have to put all those coefficients in my table. And again, if you look at the row of Z, it has the optimality condition, everything is positive. In the right-hand side, you have a negative value. So you can solve this problem using the dual simplex method. To do that, we choose the most negative value in the right-hand side and implement the min test on the negative values of the pivot row, which in this case are negative one half and negative one half. Now to do that, I divide one half by one half and seven half by one half. The minimum of the two is related to S3. So that column becomes my pivot column. Now I have to iterate and go to the next table where I can get the new solution to this problem. Now if I do the iteration, this is the new table that I get. If you look at the right hand side, you see everything is in form of integer value and also the objective function has an integer value. So with this, we have concluded our cutting plane method. We reach to a solution. The solution to this problem is x1 equal to 3, x2 is 2, and s1 is 2, s2 is 1. Also, the va value of s3 and s4 that are not basic are equal to 0. The value of objective function is 27. You can plug the value of your decision variables into the objective function and confirm that you got the solution right. Now that we have solved this problem, let's look into the limitations of cutting plane method. For, uh, the most important uh, thing that you have to pay attention is that the fractional cu uh, cuts work with the assumption that all variables are integer. Therefore, they do not allow fractional values for a slack and excess variable. For example, in this case, you see that 2 and 1 are integer for S1 and S2, so you never reach to the final solution unless you have integer values for all your variables. So that's one of the limitations of cutting plane method. For example, suppose that you have this equation. So in this case, if you want to get an integer solution for x1 and x2, your s1 must be fractional. So if you solve this using the cutting plane method, it turns out to be infeasible because cutting plane method does not allow you to have fractional values for s1. So how do we resolve that? One way to resolve this uh, problem is to multiply the two sides of this cut equation by an appropriate value so that all the coefficients are integer. For example, if you multiply the two sides of this equation by 6 on both sides, then you're going to be able to get the, this equation here that allows you to have integer value for all variables, including your slack variable. However, this solution sometimes causes generating really big numbers. Another solution to overcome that limitation of cutting plane method is to use mixed cuts, which restrict the integer assumption to a subset of your variables. For example, you make an assumption that only x1 and x2 are integer, and your s1 can be decimal or fractional. If you want to read more about that, refer to Taha 1975, page 198 to 202. With this, we have concluded cutting plane method. Thank you for watching and refer to your Blackboard for your assignments. Thank you.